Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, it is so great to have you all here at the Other Art Fair Dallas's virtual editions. Um, I've never been to the Other Art Fair Dallas in person. I always drew the short straw um, when it came to um, you know, who would get to attend. So I'm really excited to be able to uh, see the fair today virtually, and I hope that you'll all enjoy yourselves. Um, to, um, so my name is Monty Preston. I'm the manager of art advisory and curation at Saatchi Art. And today my goal is really to share some tips for researching and connecting with artists as you explore the fair this weekend. Um, as well as some strategies that you can employ as you begin to build or expand your art collection. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you about a few artists who are showing at the fair that I'm personally really excited about. Uh, it'll only be uh, just a handful of artists that we'll discuss, but there are so, so many artists who are showing at the fair this weekend that are really worth digging into and um, you know, visiting their booths, visiting their works, uh, making appointments to speak with them. Um, so it's a really fantastic roster of artists who are exhibiting, uh, and the other of her team did a phenomenal job um, curating this fair, so I'm really excited about it. So I'll start with a bit of background on Saatchi Art. Uh, Saatchi Art is the world's leading online art gallery, um, and it has a very long tradition of discovering and supporting emerging artists. Saatchi Art was established uh, about 10 years ago, and what connects us with the other art fair and why we partnered with the fair um, is this shared passion that we both have of finding outstanding emerging artists and giving them opportunities that traditional galleries uh, in the art world um, haven't necessarily been able to offer in the past. It's our mission to make art more accessible to people around the world um, and to help collectors find artworks that they love. And, you know, we work with artists from over 80 different countries around the globe and in partnering with the fair, we have this unique opportunity where we're able to offer an experience for collectors and artists to meet and interact with one another in person um, in various cities around the globe or virtually as you're experiencing this weekend. So over the course of the fair this weekend, you will be able to make appointments with artists directly, uh, which is a really rewarding and illuminating experience and a great opportunity um, to connect with an artist and learn more about their work um, and to answer some of the deeper questions that we'll get into when we start looking at artwork um, that, you know, is that you're considering uh, investing in or adding to your collection. So I've been very fortunate to train closely with Rebecca Wilson, who is Saatchi Art's Chief Curator and um, Vice President of Art Advisory. And Rebecca has over 15 years of experience working with um, and identifying top emerging artists uh, in her previous role as Director of the Saatchi Gallery in London. Um, I began working with Rebecca in 2018 and now as the manager of the Art Advisory and Curation team, I oversee artist selection for various editorials, uh, one of which would include our annual Rising Stars report, which um, it highlights uh, a selection of the most promising young artists uh, from around the world, including artists who are graduating from the FA and MFA programs. It's a really exciting piece to put together. I would highly recommend that you all check it out if you're interested in um, learning more about um, emerging artists uh, with this sort of investment mindset. Um, and the report is really scrutinized by galleries and curators uh, in, you know, within the industry due to the amount of research and curation that is done for the feature. Um, many of the artists that we have featured have uh, been taken on by brick and mortar galleries and are now showing their work in really established um, galleries around the world. So it's definitely worth exploring. So if you've joined this call, um, you're likely here because you're interested in building a collection of investment worthy artworks. And I have a few recommendations and guidelines um, for you as you're getting into this space with, um, with, with that goal in mind. So the first is to do your research, uh, really get out there, um, whether in person or virtually, you know, attend fairs and exhibitions, um, go to galleries, look online, go to MFA and BFA shows, uh, read art magazines, you know, figure out what you like and what really interests you. And, and the more research you do, 
um, the better understanding you're going to have of, of what really um, what really inspires passion within you in, in terms of artworks. Um, while you're doing this research, uh, you know, you want to keep an eye out for a few things. The first would be for uh, distinctive styles. So uh, when you come across an artwork and you're seeing um, a piece that, you know, has been executed um, really phenomenally, and that sort of merges with really strong ideas and perspectives on the part of the, um, the artist, this can be a um, it can generate a really exciting signature style in the sense that maybe you're seeing something that you haven't before um, and that's special to that particular artist. And the other thing that you should pay attention to is, you know, what your gut or your heart says, right? So there's a reason that you will be drawn to certain works and those visceral responses are something that you should really go with and pay attention to. So gravitate towards those artworks that you love. Um, and then, you know, once you have found that work that is interesting to you, then it's time to really connect with that art and to dig deeper and learn the backstory. So uh, you can investigate the why. So why this particular subject matter? Why these color choices? Um, why was this material used? Uh, you know, also, why do you like the artwork? What is it about it? Is it the emotions that it stirs? Um, or is it, you know, the way that the artist is manipulating the materials or the subject in a way that you've maybe never seen before? Um, so, you know, learning the story of the artwork and the artist, what their inspiration was, um, it's a way of really connecting to these very creative people um, who are making the works that you're looking at. And it's a really interesting uh, process and allows you to sort of gain a deeper perspective on the artwork. Uh, you may also consider the question of education. So one of the things that we do is attend degree shows um, for like BFA, BFA, MFA shows to identify and support really emerging artists at this at this young, um, really young artists at this um, stage in their career, very early stage. And uh, it, it's a great way to sort of stay on the pulse and, and see what's see what's going on out there. Uh, you also want to keep in mind that there are many, many artists who are self-taught. Um, and this can be a really impressive and incredible thing. Uh, many artists in the art historical world, um, for instance, Van Gogh, um, you know, they were self-taught and it takes a lot of drive and trial and error um, and self-teaching in order for somebody to, somebody who, who doesn't necessarily have a formal arts background to, um, you know, be here showing their work with us today. So this is something to definitely pay attention to. Uh, and I also like to, you know, while looking into their background, um, see if they've been invited to exhibitions and shows, have they won any awards, have they been nominated for prizes, etc. Uh, as all of these are really good indicators of an artist who has particular promise. Um, and then in terms of technique and execution, you want to think about, uh, you know, the process, how the work was made, um, what technical skills and ability have gone into creating the work. Uh, in person, you can really get up close to an artwork and look at all the finer details, but you're also able to do this at the fair this weekend online. You can zoom right into an artwork and, and, and get that experience um, from the really high resolution images of the pieces. And then uh, lastly, you might choose to look at an artist's full body of work uh, and see how the concepts that they are working on carry on from piece to piece within their portfolio. And which, you know, this really shows how they are evolving and developing. Um, and it's a good sign to see this. If you like their early work and you like their current work, there's a good chance that you will like their future work. And that's um, a really good thing when you are thinking about investing in an artist. Um, and also a sign of their, their longevity as an artist. So um, definitely look at the full, the full body of the portfolio of work for that artist as well. Uh, and then so sort of once you have done this, you've found an artwork that you like, you've, you've dug deeper um, and you're, you're interested in collecting, a wonderful place to start um, doing that is here at the other art fair. So buying work by emerging artists before they get taken on by galleries, um, it's a good way to acquire your first pieces at a, a much more accessible price and also have that experience of becoming a patron of a young artist and um, developing that relationship. Uh, you might also consider um, limited editions. So it's a really great place to start uh, collecting in terms of budget. 
They tend to be much more reasonably priced than paintings or sculptures. And you shouldn't be afraid thinking uh, there's no value in additioned work. Um, many famous artists did additions, including Picasso and Matisse. And you'll see their editions coming up for sale at auction at quite considerable prices. And then, uh, you know, lastly, I might suggest um, focusing on a medium or a theme for your collection. So uh, it's a strong approach that um, collectors like Elton John, who's known for his photography collection, or um, Peggy Guggenheim, who collected surrealist and abstract uh, painting and sculpture, um, employed. And, you know, perhaps you could uh, set some parameters around your collection like the Vogels did. So they were a couple in, in New York in the 60s and um, they agreed they would only purchase work that they loved regardless of uh, critics' opinions as well as artworks that they could carry home. And they ended up with um, a collection of over 4,000 smaller works by some really big name artists including Liechtenstein, um, Chuck Close, Donald Judd, uh, and their, their collection is now in the National Gallery of Art in Washington, DC. So uh, if any of this is overwhelming, you can always get help. Um, working with an art advisor is a really great thing to do. So um, art advisors can provide guidance and recommendations uh, for you. It can be really time consuming to do all of this research on your own. And this is something that we at Sachi Art offer to people for free. Um, through our art advisory services. So our uh, curation team will offer tailored one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, recommending um, works based on your personal preferences, uh, your you know, budgetary parameters, size restraints, et cetera. And you are you know, welcome and very encouraged to get in touch with us uh, directly via email at curator at um, or you can head over to sachiart.com slash art advisory and submit um, a request along with a little quiz that you can go through. Uh, and I have that information up here on this slide for you. So that's for your reference. I'll put it up at the end as well. So you don't have to write it down right now. Um, I wanna stress that the most important thing that you that you, you should take into consideration when collecting is that you really should love an artwork and feel that you've invested in something that will make you happy every time you see it. When you buy art, uh, love what you're buying. Don't just think about the investment aspect. Art is not a product. Um, it's something that you have an emotional relationship with and there are no guarantees in terms of investments. Uh, that said, we have a lot of experience working with emerging artists who do go on to have notable careers. Um, and I'm excited to talk to you about a few artists who are showing at this very fair, uh, who I am excited about. So I'd like to start with um, Barbara Kubel, who, uh, and this is a, an image of her booth uh, at the fair. So you'll see it when you're exploring. She is, um, uh, she's based in Daphne, Alabama. And um, she uses oil and pencil for her works, which are on paper and canvas. And she also experiments with um, traditional print techniques such as woodcut uh, and approaches them with sort of a more sculptural mentality rather than um, a, a two-dimensional work technique. She was born and raised in Austria and earned two art degrees from the Academy of Fine Art in Vienna. And she also has a master's of science and psychology and is a member of the British Psychological Society um, which is really uh, remarkable and, and um, plays an interesting role in the works that she creates. Um, this this uh, psychological influence, um, you know, it, it leads her to explore concepts um, such as like group dynamics, social situations, um, such as being in a lineup or stuck in an elevator, for instance. Um, and you'll see uh, in this work, um, you know, her figures are not uh, inevitably human, but they sort of display transformed fluid aspects of being and of gender um, and are often in, you know, really spontaneous interactions. So here's an example of a woodcut side by side to uh, the, the printed work. Um, they're characterized by a really strong graphic element uh, resulting from pencil strokes, which Barbara sees as the most important carrier of uh, visual information. And um, she works in this sort of reduced pictogram-like style as a way of focusing um, only on what's relevant. So the gesture is the most important quality in the work. 
Uh, what I really love about them is, is, you know, the intense color, the very sparse background, um, the fluidity of the lines and sort of the, there's a lot of action happening, even though you can't really tell what it is and what's going on. Um, I just think they're, they're really fantastic pieces. Um, and her work has been exhibited uh, widely across the US and Europe. Uh, I would definitely encourage you all to explore her booth this weekend um, or you know, visit her works on sachiart.com uh, as well. You can make an appointment to speak with her, as I mentioned before, to learn more about her work. And she does also have a number of limited editions available um, at very accessible prices. So uh, worth exploring. And then next, I'd like to um, move on to Dan Monteavaro. He also goes by the street art name of Mancho 1929, um, which Mancho, I think, was his grandfather's name. So there's a little bit of um, a story there, and you could ask him about it, I suppose. Uh, he is a Puerto Rican artist from South Bronx, and he's now living and working in Los Angeles. And uh, the work that he makes today incorporates a graffiti and street art aesthetic uh, that influenced him. Um, you know, he grew up with it uh, in South Bronx. And um, what he does is he takes that influence and integrates it with more traditional techniques, such as silkscreen and representational drawing. And um, content of his work uh, shares in this diversity of his techniques uh, with themes ranging from war to animal poaching to police brutality, um, celebrity obsession. He studied fine art at Buffalo University in New York and was also um, an apprentice sculptor at St. John the Divine Cathedral in New York. So he's experimented with many, many different types of art form, including you know, metalwork, uh, tattooing. And I think you can really see uh, all of this influence and interest present in this series that, um, that he's showing, which is his Chimera series. I'm gonna pull up um, a time-lapse video to play. Here are a few more works from the Chimera series. They sort of remind me of, you know, exquisite corpse um, mixing tops and, and, and bottoms. Um, they're really, really great. So let's see if this video works. Fantastic. So I took this from uh, Dan's Instagram, the handles at the top at Moncho1929. And you can see, you know, he starts off by blocking out background colors and then starts laying in shapes for the figures, which will be in the foreground. Um, and, you know, as I mentioned in, in this Chimera series, particularly the figures have this really fantastic sort of like twisted uh, concept, it's this mashup of bodies of humans, bodies of animals, um, you know, pieces of a machine as well. Uh, and then he goes in with India ink, which you just saw. Um, here's the final piece. Come on. Oh. There it is. All right, so there's the final work. Uh, so he goes in with India ink and um, paints in really exquisite detail. And you can see in that video how as the ink dries, it takes on a, a different quality and really adds a new dimension to the work. Um, they're just executed really stunningly, and uh, it's so cool as well to think that this Chimera series in particular is really different from uh, Dan's previous works, including his uh, um, murals and, and pop works. So here are a few previous works of Dan's. Uh, you know, and this just goes to show that there's a lot of joy and freedom and experimentation in the way that he approaches his work, and I think it's a great sign as it points to an artist who has a lot of inspiration to pull from. So, um, yeah, definitely check out Dan. Uh, you know, he's shown his works both nationally and internationally, um, and his pieces can be found in multiple private and, uh, you know, city corporate collections from the LA Clippers to French Consulate of the US, um, public art collections of cities of Glendale, Los Angeles, West Hollywood. Uh, he does really amazing large scale murals, which have been archived with the Los Angeles Mural Conservancy and um, Google Street Art Project. And most recently, his work was acquired uh, for permanent collections of the Fig Museum of Art. And he was also included in the um, BP Portraiture Awards, BP Portrait Awards for the National Portrait Gallery in the UK. So quite a remarkable CV. Uh, okay, and then next we have Whitney Avra. 
Um, Whitney is an artist based in Austin, Texas, and she's a self-taught mixed media artist. So um, a lot of her work is exploring female identity and she uses uh, vintage photography and various other materials to create her portraits. She's exhibited at the um, Elizabeth Ney Museum in Austin and at various editions of the other art fair. Uh, and we worked with her quite a bit at Saatchi Art. Um, and she's been featured uh, in several arts and, and cultural publications as well. So Whitney describes her practice. It's really interesting. Um, she describes it as bridging earthside experiences with clairvoyance by using acrylic paint and hand embroidery techniques, uh, bits of vintage ephemera and, and textile nostalgia. So she works on paper and canvas and occasionally directly on these old photographs themselves um, through a process of, uh, quote, layering, listening, and learning about the ways her subjects give and receive, love and hold space, bond with sisters, and shed societal constraints to step into their power. So each piece is really unique. Uh, it's really detailed. And she, you know, in this process, she's transforming these, um, these women in these photographs into sort of luminescent icons. Um, by adding, you know, embroidery and stitches or like a color field, as you see across um, the face of uh, this subject. Uh, in others, there is a golden sort of saintly halo um, in which she's really elevating ordinary women into um, figures of reverence. So for instance, you see the golden halo here. Uh, this work is based on that famous image of um, Margaret Heafield Hamilton who was born in 1936 and was uh, a, a team leader at MIT um, whose software systems were really critical to Apollo 11's uh, mission and that success in a time when you know, women weren't necessarily in a lot of STEM programs um, or fields. And so uh, what Whitney does in this work is, you know, she'll bring in materials that are special to her subject. So we have this um, stack of paper, which was the code printout for the mission. And um, if you zoom in, Whitney has collaged in uh, text that talks about like gamma rays and galaxies um, and a lot of scientific material that really honors uh, Hamilton's contribution to the field. Um, I don't know where this text comes from, but you could schedule an appointment with her to find out more about her work. And here's just another really great example, uh, looking at, you know, how these additions um, of different materials and color really bring uh, these old photographs back to life. And they, they tell this story and um, you really feel the personality of the people in these images uh, come back out. So I think they're really fantastic works. And then lastly, I want to talk about Raphael Crump. Um, Raphael is a painter from New York City. He's now living and working in Dallas, and he graduated from a School of Visual Arts in 2007. His work has been exhibited across the US, uh, including showings at um, Spectrum Miami, uh, at Art Basel in 2017. And uh, Raphael's background is um, he previously worked in graphic arts at a major media firm and then moved to painting full time in 2017. So here's a picture of his booth, uh, which you'll see. And um, here's an example of one of his works. So majority of his works consist of urban imagery, imagery sourced from uh, you know, his experiences growing up in New York. And you'll notice that uh, as you're exploring his pieces, he rarely places people in his work and instead gives attention to the beauty of everyday objects that are regularly overlooked. Um, really nice, nice, nice use of light and color. You can tell he's also a huge sneaker fanatic and incorporates this love for shoes and sneaker culture into a lot of his pieces. Um, for instance, like high-end footwear that's been thrown over um, power lines, which is a phenomenon that has pretty global recognition. What I think is really exciting about Raphael's work is that he is constantly developing and evolving as an artist. Earlier in his career, he was sort of strictly working with aerosols and acrylic on canvas, and then, um, you know, decided he was going to move into oil paints, for instance, uh, at the encroachment of a fellow artist and one of his mentors. 
Um, and this shift really uh, opened up a new realm of creative opportunity and technical experimentation, which resulted in a new and different visual field from earlier works. He, um, he's also really fine-tuned his focus in storytelling and color palette just through experimentation uh, with new things, trying new techniques, trial and error, paying attention to how people react to the work, getting feedback. Um, and you know this, uh, it, this combined with a really impressive drive um, and determination on his part to, um, you know, it, it, to turn his artistic career um, into a business and, and running it really professionally. It makes him stand out as somebody to watch, in my opinion. I, I have no doubt that he's going to go on to do really great things. Um, and I'm really excited to see how his work evolves. I would definitely recommend uh, connecting him with the fair if you have questions about his work um, and his practice. So um, I realized I lied and I didn't put that extra slide in, that clear contact information, but I will circle back. Um, I don't wanna take up too much of your time and I hope that reviewing these works gives you some insight into the things that we look for as curators uh, when making sense of an artwork um, and determining its significance. So again, these are just a few uh, artists on display at the other art fair. Um, and I do hope that you um, go on and take some of the strategies that we talked about with you as you explore the fair this weekend. Again, I'll, I'll say it again, the best advice uh, when acquiring art is always to buy what you love. Um, and this applies whether you decide to buy one piece of art for a specific place in your home or a collection of works. And let's see if I can find that slide. There it is. So again, Saatchi Art offers a free art advisory service that you can access on our website. You will be connected with a personal advisor who can help find works according to your preferences and parameters. Um, it is a really exciting and crucial time to support emerging artists, especially you know, on the heels of a very challenging year. Uh, and the Saatchi Art and the other art fair team are um, really happy to help you on your journey as a collector. So please don't hesitate to reach out if we can do anything to assist you. Um, I hope that you found this useful and I wish you the best of luck on your collecting journey and I hope that you all enjoy the fair. So have a great weekend.